One Mamba victim who has been this close to death and survived is Jack Seal. There you can see the black Mamba opening its mouth. That was a yawn, actually. It wasn't aggressiveness at all. I've done everything a person can do with a black Mamba. And the Mamba's done everything it could do to me. It's killed me, and I've survived. I was clinically dead for eight days. Jack runs an animal park and is one of South Africa's most respected Mamba experts. He's devoted much of his life to demonstrating how to handle the black Mamba safely. But all it took was one mistake, and Jack was bitten. I could actually see the venom shooting back out of my body. Out. So I knew I had a very severe bite, and I knew I had a couple of minutes to live. I got to the laboratory and I started to treat myself. Jack kept anti-venom on site, but he is one of the unfortunate few allergic to it. Anti-venom would save him if it didn't kill him first. I took a syringe and drew up two and a half cc's, put it in, took it out, drew up another two and a half cc's, put it in, and yeah, I was laughing to myself and I was thinking to myself, God, you're going to die because the things are against you. It was a tough decision, but anti-venom was his only chance. I can remember clearly the blanket of death being pulled over me and knowing I was dying. The combined effects of the mamba venom and the anti-venom put Jack into a coma shortly after arriving at hospital. The next thing I remember is just waking up. And I thought, OK, I'm, I'm awake. And I heard... And then it took me a couple of minutes to realize that I was alive, but my body was non-functional. I saw this bright light in my eye, and then as the light was pulled back, I saw the guy's face. He was one of the doctors just checking all the symptoms, and one of the symptoms of brain death is the enlargement of the pupil. There's no movement on the pupil. If the pupil opens up totally and there's no movement, it means to say the person's dead. And he closed my eye. And I thought, God, why did you close it? I wanted to see. And naturally, I couldn't tell him this. The doctors thought Jack was brain dead, kept alive only by the life support systems. I can remember my wife was there. And the doctor said, well, he's alive, but the machine's keeping him alive. The best thing we could do for these people is trip the switch for him. And I wanted to shout out. I wanted to shout, you're mad, I'm alive, I'm okay. I'm yeah. But naturally, my brain was like, just isolated like being in a box. After a week, the hospital staff had given up on Jack. The only thing they felt they could do was switch the machines off. Jack lay for days, helplessly watching, silently pleading for someone to realize he was alive. I started to think to myself, now's the time I must get out of here. I must start telling these people I'm alive. And a nurse was doing something on my pillars and everything like this, and I flicked my finger, and she saw the movement. And she rushed off to call the doctor, and he came back and she said, I did see the finger move. So he said, Mr. Seal, if you can hear me, flick your finger twice. I flicked my finger twice, and they said, God, he's alive, he can hear and he can understand. And I mean, within seconds, there were people all over the place.